Hey guys, it's Ryan with Fluid Health bringing you another episode of Science Powered Fitness and today we're going to talk a little bit about the neck and the head during gait. Um, if you've ever wondered how you position your head while you're running, uh, well today is all about that. So just remember that when you're moving, uh, your body's broken down into two global cycles of movement. One's called weight bearing or stance and the other is called swing or non-weight bearing. So the joints go into a contracted state where everything compresses when you weight into gravity. And then your body then has to stabilize momentarily and then advance the weight of the opposite side of the body forward, basically relaxing the muscles on the one side as you e exit the muscle strategy associated with weight bearing. And then you let go of it and then you move into weight bearing on the other side. So it's this combination of contract and release of these opposing forces as you move your body into gravity, find stability, and then advance and swing the body forward on the opposite side. So that's normally referred to as stance and swing biomechanics. And so we just look at the way the joints operate under the context of that pattern, and we assess where the body is moving from. So typically under weight-bearing mechanics, when you load into the limb, the body has to stabilize from lurching forward into flexion, so the extensors contract and pulls your body up. Now again, that's going to extend partially the neck. Okay, you're twisted in a little bit, so you are rotating from the thorax, but your neck is extending, pulling you out of gravity. So your head is coming backward, or your neck is coming backward, and your head is going to tip up a little bit. So you get a little bit of flexion extension out of the upper cervical, but the lower cervical is really coming up into extension as you're pivoting in on the torso. Now that's all happening to bring you out of gravity and at around mid stance of your gait cycle, you start to use the opposite side of your neck, these neck flexors, your sterno and scalene, to rotate your head into your lead hand. So again, you're initiating the flexion rotation of your center of gravity from the head down, it's called civilicaudal, and you're bringing the trunk with it into gravity and then the trunk and the hip start into weight bearing mechanics. So there's a partial extension taking you out of gravity and then you load into flexion into gravity and your neck is basically oscillating, making small adjustments to the, again, weight distribution through the canister and the hips. But by and large, you're going into extension through the neck as you're in weight bearing and then into flexion into suspension. And we start to see a differential around mid stance when that takes over a net flexion rotation into gravity to prepare for the stance side on the opposite side. A little complicated, yes, but once you start practicing it and starting to recognize where your head orientation goes, we generally just cue the head goes to the lead hand, right? You're just basically rotating into flexion on the contralateral side, bring the weight in, and then again assume load so that the limbs don't have to do as much. Also, why sometimes we get muscle imbalances as we start to overuse the neck musculature to try to find, again, um, a compensation for a lack of control from the canister. So the neck can get involved in that as well. Questions on any of this, remember, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Remember, your body's designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next time.